Hello everyone, myself Dr. Amit Maheshwari and today we are going to discuss first topic from chemistry of lipid that is definition of lipid, functions of lipid and classification of lipid. So let's start. The learning objective for today's video are first we will see definition of lipid, then we will see functions of lipid and then we will see classification of lipid. So let's start. So first definition of lipids. So lipids are basically heterogeneous group of substances. Heterogeneous means diverse in characteristic. They are heterogeneous group of substances which are insoluble in water but soluble in various organic solvents like ether, chloroform and benzene. They are the heterogeneous group of substances which are insoluble in water and soluble in organic solvents like ether, benzene and chloroform. Lipids are mainly made up of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. They are mainly made up of hydrogen and oxygen atoms. And these atoms are linked together with each other with the help of neutral covalent bond. They are held together with the help of neutral covalent bond. And which is responsible for the non-polar characteristic of lipid. This neutral Covalent bonds are responsible for the non-polar characteristic of lipid. So that is about the definition of lipid. Now we will see functions of lipid. So the first important function is related to the energy. They are the source of energy and the principal energy reserve. So that is the first function. Second function is related to the insulin. They play important role in the electrical insulation as well as in the thermal insulator. Electrical insulation in that Cholesterol and glycolipid play important role by propagating the now impulses and in the thermal insulation, the subcutaneous fat play important role by maintaining the temperature of the body against the change in the temperature of the external environment. So that is the thermal insulation. Third important function is related to the building block. Fine. They are important component of the cell membrane and the examples are cholesterol, Phospholipid and glycolipid. Okay. All these lipids they play important role in the cell membrane synthesis. The another important function is they help in the transport, and the example is lipoprotein. Lipoprotein serve trans transport function, and they also help in the storage. Fine. The stored, they are stored in the adipose tissue in the form of triacylglycerol. That is the storage function and they are stored in the adipose tissue as a triacylglycerol. And they are also precursor for the steroid hormones and they also help in the signaling function. Fine. They serve as a hormone mediators. Then there are certain medicinal uses. Fine. They are also help, they are also used as a medicines. So the first one is the prostaglandin. This prostaglandin help in the treatment of peptic ulcer and it is also useful for the induction of flavor. Okay. And second is the digoxin. Digoxin is used in the treatment of heart failure. And it is used in the treatment of heart failure and the, then cortisol. Cortisol is used as an anti-inflammatory agent. It is used as an anti-inflammatory agent. Then they also help in the digestion and absorption because they act as an emulsifying agent. They are also going to help in the absorption of fat soluble vitamins. Fat soluble vitamins are the vitamin A, D, E and K and they are indispensable components of the nutrition that is essential fatty acids. They are very much essential in the diet. They are also mediators of inflammatory and hypersensitivity reaction. Platelet activating factors and prostaglandins. They are the mediator of inflammation. And the mediator of allergy and hypersensitivity reaction is lipotriums. Fine, so that is all about the functions of lipid. Now we will see classification of lipid. 
The lipids are mainly classified into three main classes. First one is the simple lipid, second one is the complex lipid, and the third one is the derived lipid. Fine, that is simple lipid, complex lipid, and derived lipid. So first we will discuss the simple lipid. Fine, the simple lipid they are the ester of fatty acid with alcohol. They are basically esters of fatty acid with alcohol. Fine. Simple lipids are basically they are esters of fatty acid with alcohol, and this again, depending upon the nature of alcohol present, the simple lipid is divided into two categories. First one is the triacylglycerol, and the second one is the waxes. Fine. Depending upon the type of alcohol involved, they are classified into two categories. One is the triacylglycerol, and second one is the waxes. So first, we will see triacylglycerol. The triacylglycerol is the ester of fatty acid with glycerol present in the form of alcohol. Fine, they are esters of fatty acids with glycerol. And the example of triacylglycerol are tripalmitin and triolein. So that are the example of triacylglycerol. And oils are also triacylglycerol which are present in the present in the form of liquid at the room temperature, such as coconut oil and groundnut oil. That is the triacylglycerol. Now we will see waxes. So waxes are the esters of fatty acid with alcohol other than glycerol. Fine. They are esters of fatty acid with alcohol other than glycerol. And the examples are beeswax and linoleic. And this is the picture which is explaining the structure of triacylglycerol and beeswax. So this is the triacylglycerol and beeswax. As we have discussed, triacylglycerol is the ester of fatty acid with glycerol as an alcohol. Fine. In the triacylglycerol, there is a presence of glycerol as an alcohol, and the beeswax is the waxes. In the waxes, there is a presence of other alcohol than glycerol. Fine. So there is a presence of myosin alcohol in the B wax, fine. So that is about the simple lipids. Now we will discuss the complex lipids. So complex lipids, as the name suggests, they will contain fatty acid, alcohol, and some other additional groups. And there will be the presence of fatty acid, alcohol, and some other additional groups. And depending upon the type of additional groups involved, these complex lipids are further classified into three categories. So the first one is the phospholipids. Second one is the glycolipids, and the third one is the lipoproteins. So these are the example of complex lipid. Depending upon the additional group, they are further classified into three categories. First one is the phospholipid. Second one is the glycolipid, and the third one is the lipoprotein. Fine. So the first we will see the phospholipids. The phospholipids, as the name suggests, they will contain phos. They will be the presence of phosphate as an additional group. Fine. So they are the complex lipid containing phosphate as an additional group. And these phospholipids are further grouped based on the type of alcohol present in two group. Fine. They are classified into further two categories depending upon the presence of alcohol. That is glycerol phospholipids. As the name suggests, they will contain glycerol as an alcohol, and the second one is the sphingophospholipid. As the name suggests, they will contain sphingosine as an alcohol. So first, now we will see glycerol phospholipids. So glycerol phospholipids, as the name suggests, they will contain glycerol as an alcohol. And the examples of glycerol phospholipids are phosphodiester choline, phosphodiester ethanolamide, phosphodiester serine, phosphodiester inositol, phosphodiester glycerol, diphosphodiester glycerol, which is also known as the cardiolipin, then plasmolysins and platelate activating factors. So all these are example of glycerol phospholipid, which is an example of phospholipid containing glycerol as an alcohol. Fine. Now we will see sphingophospholipid. The sphingophospholipid, as the name suggests, it will contain sphingosine as an alcohol. Fine, it is a type of phospholipid which contains sphingosine as an alcohol. 
And the example of sphingophospholipid is the sphingomyelin. Fine. Example of sphingophospholipid is the sphingomyelin. And this is the picture which explains the structure of glycerophospholipid and sphingophospholipid. As we have discussed, glycerophospholipid will contain glycerol. Fine. While the sphingophospholipid will contain sphingosine as an alcohol. And they will contain additional group that is phosphate. So that is all about the phospholipids. Now we will see glycolipids. So glycolipids as the name suggests, they will contain fatty acid, alcohol and there will be the presence of carbohydrate as an additional group. Okay? They will contain carbohydrate as an additional group. And these glycolipids are again divided into four categories. Fine. They are divided into four categories depending upon the type of carbohydrate present. So the first one is the cerebrocytes and the examples are glucocerebrocyte and galactocerebrocyte. Then second one is the alphatides. Third one is the globocytes and the fourth one is the gangliocytes. All these four are example of glycolipids which contains carbohydrate as a additional group. Then third complex lipid is the lipoprotein and as the name suggests they will contain protein as an additional group. Fine, there will be the presence of protein as an additional group and they are classified into five subclasses. This plasma lipoproteins are classified into five subclasses that is first one is the very low density lipoprotein, second one is the chylomicron, third one is the intermediate density lipoprotein, then low density lipoprotein and the last one is the high density lipoprotein. Low density lipoprotein is also known as the LDL and is also known as the bad cholesterol and high density lipoprotein is also known as the HDL and it is also known as the good cholesterol. That is about the lipoprotein which contain protein as an additional group and the examples are five examples. Chylomicrons, very low density lipoprotein, intermediate density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein and high density lipoprotein. Now we will see derived lipids. So derived lipids are those lipids which are derived from simple lipids or complex lipids. Fine, they are derived from the simple lipids or the complex lipids. And the example of derived lipids are fatty acids, eicosanides, terpenes and steroids. Now we will see the example of all these four derived lipids. So the first we will see fatty acids. So fatty acids are basically carboxylic acid with hydrocarbon chain. Fatty acids are basically carboxylic acid with hydrocarbon chain and they are classified into five classes depending upon their structure. That is saturated fatty acid, unsaturated fatty acid, hydroxy fatty acid, branch chain fatty acid and cyclic fatty acid. Fine. So that is about the fatty acids. Now we will see eicosanides. Fine. So eicosanides are derivative of 20 carbon containing fatty acid such as arachidonic acid right? and they are further classified into four main categories that is prostaglandins, prostacycline, homoxone and leukotriens and the third derived lipid is the terpenes. Terpene contain isoprenoid units. Isoprenoids are the five carbon containing compound and the example of terpenes are the carotenes, vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin K, dolchy, Dolicol and squalene. And the last one is the steroids. Steroids are the lipids which contain cyclopentone per hydrophenanthrene ring. They contain cyclopentone per hydrophenanthrene steroid ring. And the example of steroids are the cholesterol, cholesterol derivative, testosterone, estradiol, bile acids, aldosterone, ergosterol, and digitalis. So that is about the derived lipids. So that is all about definition, functions, and classification of lipids. Thank you.